Hello world. And today I am chatting with Danny D of Danny D Fitness about self-love and her journey and body image. I'm so excited. Welcome. Say hi to the world, Danny. <laughs> hey guys. Hey, how are you? Are you doing good today, Beth? I am. I am. Thank God. Yes. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. It's been really productive. Um, just recorded an episode for my love your body podcast. Ooh. And, um, I think, I don't know, just a bunch of errands today, you know, and got a spray tan. So that was nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yes. Productive. Mm -hmm. So let's jump right into all the good stuff. Okay. <laughs> Tell the world a bit about yourself, um, okay. your journey, because you have an athletic and dance background, your journey mm -hmm. to becoming an athlete as well as a businesswoman. And I know you mentioned your podcast. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So basically um, I started at the age of three dancing and became a competitive dancer. Um, I have always had a large frame. I've always weighed more than other women. Um, I always stood out in a sense and was told that that was negative of how I looked. I didn't match dancer's body. Um, and then growing up, you know, with that stigma and the verbal abuse and things like that, it really kind of just diminished my confidence, my self-esteem steam, um, to the point where I hated my, my body and didn't want to look at myself in the mirror, um, which led to not being able to really, you know, buy nice clothes or feel mm -hmm. like wearing, you know, I call it real people clothes. Um, and, uh, just wearing a bunch of workout stuff all the time, even though I, you know, for a whole year there, I wasn't working out at all. Um, and then when I finally decided I had had enough, I became a group fitness instructor to help me actually get healthy. So I was teaching classes at my heaviest weight, um, and ended up becoming one of the most advanced instructors there. Um, and from there went to Vermont, worked at an all women's healthy living resort, learned about body positivity because it was happening up North. Uh, but down in the South, we really hadn't heard of that yet. Um, that wasn't talked about. And, um, so I learned a lot about that, um, as well as binge eating disorders and anorexia and all the things that I, I saw at the resort. Um, and then, um, from there, uh, I actually ended up getting a job in Franklin and working at a gym. Um, and when I first got to that gym, they, I had looked at me and kind of asked why I was there. And I had been like hired by the CEO. And so they kind of said that it would be really hard for me um, to like be, I guess, successful in that role as a personal trainer. Wow. And so then at that point, I just ended up getting put behind a desk job um, there for about six, or I was actually nine so eight, eight, eight or so months. And, uh, and then after that, um, I finally was like, you know what, like, cause I was subbing classes and they actually saw my format move fit. And they were like, this is awesome. We love this. And I was like, yeah, like I'm actually really good at what I do. And so after I did that for, I was basically fed up with it. So I was like, you know what, I'll just go for it. Started doing water aerobics, group fitness, personal training. I was working all different fields in that gym, learned everything about a business that I needed to know. Uh, and then when it came time, um, I opened up my own business about three and a half years ago. And I wanted it to be a safe place where people could just feel like their best selves and love themselves throughout and not feel judged or that people are watching them while they're working out or that they look like they shouldn't be working out or that they, you know what I mean? I, I just, I want to know, no more of the nonsense. Um, and that's what kind of led me to where, where I'm at. And, uh, and yeah, and then from there, I ended up doing strongman competitions um, to help me have an outlet so that I wasn't just working all the time. And strongman is very unique and very, um, yeah, very niche. And uh, I just was really good and naturally strong. And finally, it came into fruition that this body of mine was meant to lift heavy things. It was meant to do amazing things. And it, and it didn't happen, you know, until I was 25 that I realized that fully. So I was on this process for the past nine years of loving myself. And then in the last, you know, two, really understanding my body. Mm, yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's a journey, like mm. healing, self-love, like acceptance. It's a journey and it, it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. actually you said something uh, uh, a bit back when you said you had kind of been like hiding in these gym clothes and everything, and then you kind of had enough. And I, I'm curious what what made you decide you'd had enough? Like what happens? Cause some people don't have that, you know, they right. just do their whole lives. 
Yeah. I mean, I was to the point where like, so I would practice my dance um, classes like in my apartment. Right. And I put my laptop uh, up and I would record myself doing it. Right. And I just remember wearing this outfit and I looked back at the video and I kept watching it. And I was like, that's not me. I don't mm -hmm. feel good in what's happening here, you know? And I, I just was so upset and it was just like, man, you know, cause the moves were great and the, it was all good, but I just couldn't even watch myself, you know? Um, and the only time I ever felt safe in my body was when I was actually teaching in front of people. And I felt like I had that kind of role as an instructor. Cause I had to like be there for them. I couldn't be about myself, you know? Um, and so for me, like, I don't know. It, it, I have continually focused on trying to be able to tackle wearing like regular clothes and being fashionable or I don't know, not fashionable, but just like feeling good in my body and, and like kind of making the the clothes work for me because I feel like they've always kind of worked against me because of my large frame. There's just certain things that like I just I cannot physically wear, I can't fit into, and I'm not obese by any means or, you know what I mean? Um, and just have a lot of muscle. And with my build and stuff and so it has been a, a struggle to even even now after losing most of my weight and feeling my best to buy stuff and, and it has helped you know over the course of time you know uh, and sizes now have gone up and they've kind of done better about you know different brands and stuff you know um but it still is a very hard uh hard thing for me when it comes to like shopping and stuff like that yeah maybe it's time to develop your own clothing line. I know, I know. I do have my dandy fitness, you know, shirts, booty shorts, all the stuff, you know, uh, great material. Um, I love wearing all that stuff, but, but yeah, I mean, with, with, with wearing, you know, like I say, real people clothes, um, it's just so, um, interesting because it's like, for me, I have to pretty much alter every outfit that I get right? Like if I get a shirt and it fits me like all the way to my hips or whatever, it's too long. I have a short torso. So it's almost like I have to like crop it up and then it like makes sense. And you can see my figure, right? Um, if somebody has like a t-shirt dress on, like I can't wear that unless I like tie up the bottom of it and like kind of singe it. Like, you know what I mean? Like it, it, yeah. it's, or it's just like a big block. Like that's just how it, yeah, how it goes. Um, and so I always want to find things that accent you know, not, um, not hide my attributes, you know? Yeah. I think that's amazing though. I mean, that's a, that's fashion anyway, is figuring yeah. out, you know, yeah. how to accentuate the natural beauty. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And I think that's, and I think it's important for like, for people to understand that, like, it, it has taken me this long, like, you know, it took me like about seven years to even like be comfortable doing that. So it, it, you know, when, when people say stuff and they're like, oh, like you should just, um, you know, you should just be able to like throw on whatever you want. It's like, it's not that easy, especially when you can't even look at yourself in the mirror, let alone, let me just throw on an outfit and go meet you for like dinner, you know? Yeah. So where is, well, actually let's, let's back up a little bit. How do you define love? And then like, how does that connect to, you know, love for your body, love, self love, because, mm -hmm. you know, there is even more to love than just the physical, mm -hmm. you know, there's, you know, phrases of like beauty from within. And how do you feel about that? Like just about self love in general and yeah. love. Yourself. Yeah. I think that, I think we live in a society where we are looking for other people's opinions and values, right? And to put them on ourselves. And I think that um, we're taught at a young age that we should care what others think and we, or like, or that we should be mindful of other people and things like that. And yes, you should, but not about what they think about your body. You know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to that, like that love needs to come from within. Doesn't need to be seeked out in a partner. Um, doesn't need to be seeked out from a parent. Like, it, it, it has to come from something inside you that truly sees the beauty in yourself. And like I had talked about on a previous uh, conversation, it, it seems like um, the, you know, these kids that I was talking to, you know, they, you know, it, it's all very comparative. You know, they don't, they don't like, you know, this person or, you know, they don't like how they look because this person told them they shouldn't, or mm -hmm. that's what happened to me. Um, or they all just look so different and I stand out because I'm taller and, you know, larger body. And so I shouldn't like that. Like I should be, I should be shamed for just 
that's how I grew up. Like that's how I was brought up. You know what I mean? Like in this body. And um, so I think that if you don't have that inner love for yourself, you will never feel like your best, you know, there'll always be something missing and you'll be seeking it out in other people. And then that can cause a whole nother, right. you know, a whole nother mess. It's another bag of worms. So how, how do you personally achieve that? Like, how do you find love from yourself? Like, how do you achieve that self-love? How do you so find for, love inside? Yeah. You? So for me, um, movement really helped me and not just like working out to like lose weight and like burn calories and stuff, but as a stress reliever, it helped me feel beautiful. Like even when I do like little workouts and stuff like that, and I look at myself after, I just feel like I look like myself and I look like the better version. Like it shines through. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that when doing like, um, you know, podcasts and like talking to people like you and stuff like that, like all of that helps me to love myself more because I'm getting a chance to share my story and share parts of myself that maybe I didn't love, but now I do now, you know, I do now. And so I really like focus on continually reminding myself that it's not about what anyone else is doing. It's not about anyone else's path, but it is about my path and you know, the intuition that I've been blessed with and, and those things that have helped me to, you know, see that beauty finally, but through throughout this journey, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and also remembering where I came from and knowing that that was a struggle, that was hard work. And like that hard work is beautiful, that that, you know, those those uh, trials and tribulations, all those things are beautiful because they help me see my worth, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, remembering the what you accomplished, right? Mm -hmm. Like that work, because that's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, dance, fitness, and then opening your own business, and then yeah. you were doing the competitions as well, which is comparative, mm -hmm. right? So there's yeah. there's still even in that which you said was a stress rank. There's there's comparison, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, with the strength sport and everything, it is, um, when you, with strongman, it's so different than CrossFit and powerlifting and all that. Like, I mean, every, like, so the people that you hear yelling in like my, my tire flip video are the other competitors. Like, yeah, they're the people in the stands and you know, people watching, but the girl like holding it was competing against me. Like she knew she lost. Uh huh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But right. they, they were so like, because with that kind of sport and that's where I felt at home in because of that kind of sport, it makes you realize that like you have respect for people just because they can lift up that way. Doesn't uh -huh. matter if they lifted it up slower than you or you won or they didn't, it's mad respect because only like a certain percentage of the world can lift up X amount of weight. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, okay. I know I can't do that. Right. <laughs> And it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of natural strength. It takes a lot of like, you know, fighting for what you want. A lot of that. So, you know, it, it you know, I didn't really ever compare myself to the girls. Um, I just did what I wanted to do and had fun with it and like enjoyed it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that made me feel safe and not like I had to compare to uh, other people. Cool. So, mm -hmm. yeah. How much of it is mental? Because I think a lot of everything is in our mind. Like I just said, I can't like possibly like flip a tire, yeah. but I've never tried. So I shouldn't say I can't exactly, yeah. but I do know, like my current ability to lift tires, they're like just yeah. tires on my car. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And it's such a weird wow. thing to wrap your mind around too. And I, and I get that because it's very odd implements and odd objects and stuff. Um, but also with dance, I mean, with dance, even I had to jump off of like high, like props and land on my knees or land on my booty and roll. I mean, like doing like, um, you know, uh, back extension roll-ups, like doing, I mean, the flips and things like that. Like for me, it's always been like, I just turn my brain off <laughs> and I just go like for the uh, whole time when I was lifting or doing any of that, literally like heavy stuff, the guys were like, Oh, do you want to know how much weight it is? We put, and I'm like, no, no, no. Mm -mm. And I would just do it because the way that I look at it is like, I just, I literally had that ability to turn off that. Oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. You know, what I, that, that like signal. And I just did it. And I love that. I love getting out in the morning and just doing a workout and being told what to do. And like knowing that like, oh, I can get through it. I mean, it's going to suck, but like I can get through it. Yeah. It sounds pretty much like you weren't overthinking. Which exactly. is what stops a lot of people or mm -hmm. makes people doubt themselves. 
Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah, it is true. Sometimes <laughs> it's better to just do something without thinking about it and just go for it. Yeah. I think, I think there's special moments in our lives that we have, that we can, that we can capitalize on that. And I think that so many people get in a rut of like, like saying no, no, mm -mm, no, no to everything, to relationships, finances, yeah. clothing, you know, everything. And so that's why I really try to be like, not like I'm a yes man, you know, I'm not like one of those people, but like, it, it is that I try to be in the middle. I try to see everything as like, okay, I'm just going to go for it, not overthink it. But like, if it was a huge purchase or something that I was wanting to do, you know, like, yes, then I would overthink it and think of the negatives and the positives. But when it comes to movement and like fueling my body and like loving myself throughout, like I just try to just do it. And it's simple as that, like not, not and make up excuses, but like, just do it. Yeah, just do it <laughs> and enjoy it have fun. Yeah. You look like you were having fun. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. And that's, and that's the thing is like, it, I think that when you start to love yourself, you realize that you can have a lot more fun in life versus hating yourself every day. And then yeah. only focusing on negatives. Yeah, it's true. You could be like sailing the world and hating yourself mm -hmm. and miserable. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So I just try to instill that in like young girls and especially young boys and, and uh, even, you know, women and stuff and, and, and even my men, it's like everybody that I train and stuff, I've just seen that they always have this like innate sense of like um, negativity about their body. And it's like, where did that come from? And I think okay. as a culture, we have gotten to that and it doesn't help when you only see ads with like a certain body in it or a certain this or certain that, you know what I mean? Like, and so when you start seeing more people, like, I think a lot of people saw my video, they, they were like, oh my gosh, like someone that looks like me. And that was really special because when I was growing up, I didn't really have anybody that I knew that looked like me, um, or that could even understand or even like, um, comfort me, you know? Um, so I think that's a huge thing. It's interesting because um, you said you train both women and men. Is there a difference in um, in that for like how you go about um, supporting men with, you know, a healthy self-love and body image versus women? Because I do hear, I tend to hear as a photographer even, that mm. men are harsher on themselves than women. I mean, women will complain about their tummy or whatever, but like, mm -hmm men are so brutal on themselves. Right. So women, um, if I first experience with this, um, and it, it's one of those things where women just say things a lot of times we get in a, we're like a, um, like a, what is it called? A, um, you know, when it repeats itself, like the, <laughs> the record, I don't, you mean? I don't know what it is, but it's like, basically when it's just like, like a broken record is what it is, where it keeps oh, repeating okay. and keep repeating and keep repeating. And, but, and we'll be like, and we just say it. And we, sometimes women from Rails are saying it. Like I've heard people look at me in, in front of me and they're talking about themselves. I'm like, oh, I'm so like F-A-T, da, 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 da. And I'm like, what'd you say? And like, oh yeah, that's right. Like, I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, okay. You know, and then they have to like, they're like, I just, I always say it. And I'm like, exactly. That's why like when we're in this room, like we're trying to change how we view ourselves, you know? And so I don't allow those words or S K I N N Y. Like, I just don't do that. And so for me, um, you know, when it comes to my men, I mean, they have a struggle of they're supposed to be seen as masculine and tough and muscular and this and that. And some of them have a hard time putting on weight. They have a hard time, you know, filling out their clothes. And that's just as like, just as disheartening than a girl that can't fit into her clothes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I have to kind of approach it from a communication background standpoint of, you know, you are, you know, fighting for what you want. Um, you're continuing on this journey, you know, and you are powerful. You may not look like you're powerful, but you are powerful because of the things you're doing in here. The being able to come into the workout and not feel comfortable, but then at the end of it feel amazing, right? Um, coming in here and maybe a new outfit, you know, and, and stepping out of your comfort zone, like that's powerful. Like, and kind of, it's more of complimentary on that sense of it. Um, and with my girls, I feel like with them, it is more about just changing their language about it because it's like, the men really see deep down rooted. I feel like the women see like outside here. 
Yeah. You know, like the men attach it to like, they're like, their being as a person. Like for me, for example, like when I was overweight and stuff like that, I wasn't like, oh, I'm a bad person and I'm just negative. I'm just like sad. I, like, I was like, no, like I'm a great person. I'm just a little bit bigger and da, 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 you know, like that. And with men, it's like, they almost feel like they're just like not worthy. Like they're just like, yeah. just so just down on themselves. And it's like, man, it just completely, you know, goes hand in hand. I know. And I noticed that even with my students, you know, as a teacher, my boys, especially when I was, I'm not teaching middle school anymore, but when I was teaching middle school, yeah, they are so sweet and they're sensitive. And like yeah. any of my former students would probably be like, what? <laughs> and yeah. so I mean it as a compliment, you know, yep. they're, they really, you know, by the time they're in high school, they've kind of, you know, toughened up their facade and you yes, know, because I think that they should. But they're like men are really sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. they can be exactly. But they are told by society they need to be this macho. I need to look like him. I need to be the jock. I need to be this or whatever. I need to stand for something or I'm compensating or whatever. When it's like if people would just learn, you know, at a young age, especially to just be themselves and like love themselves, it, you know, it really will shine through, I think in a different light and people will start, um, start accepting men being more sensitive and women being very strong and independent, um, you know, and it, and it goes on both ends, not just, oh, I want a submissive, you know, wife that'll cook and clean. And I want a man that will, you know what I mean? And I want to, I want to, this strong, powerful man that's going to take charge and bring home the, the, the food. And, you know, you know what I mean? Like, bring a bison back on his shoulder. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's just so like, we have to get away from those. And I think that sometimes we've now gotten away from them completely, like flips, like total circle, you know, whatever, where men are treating women very poorly. And then they're like, just using, and then you have women who, you know, are falling like head over heels and not being as like, I don't know. It's just, there's so many dynamics you see nowadays that it's like bizarre. It is. It's, mm -hmm. It is getting bizarre. But I, I think, I guess my point was like, you know, that they're sweet. They're sensitive. I think for the men. And mm -hmm. I think that's like something to be mindful of because you said the communication. Yeah. You no, know, that's how you go about, you know, the training and that like our words as women can really hurt a man, whether it's like, you know, in a partner romantic relationship mm -hmm. or if it's like a parent or a sister. I'm an only child, but I imagine if I had a brother. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I have, to have a, you know, less rough tongue, but yeah. No, I totally, I totally agree. I think that, um, I think definitely from what I've seen, it, it comes down to like our words really hit hard with them. But, but a lot of times women, we just talk and we talk and we talk and you know what I mean? And it, and it is kind of hard because it's like, if we could change that into positivity and affirmations and love, you know, and also not being critical of our partner too. Cause I've seen some men be very critical of women and women be, you know, yes. and, um, and that can be very challenging because it comes from insecurity. Like what we talked about with the right. young, young kids is that insecurity stays there. Like if you don't get through that insecurity and you don't love your body and you become an adult, it doesn't go away. No. I think people think that, Oh, I'm an adult now. I'm, I'm confident, but it's really no. not. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah we carry all of that from and we carry it and I'm sure you know as an athlete we carry it all in the memories of our muscles actually yeah. even like those traumas from childhood everything those memories they're in our muscles right so, and yeah. I think that's why people can be if people could try to be kinder or speak more plainly about things and, and instead of backhanded compliments so like I think that's a big thing right now too is like it's like oh like it looks like you've lost some weight like you know but but are you eating? Like, you know what I mean? Someone's like, oh, well, yeah. thanks. I have lost weight, but like, yeah, I'm eating. Like, you know, it's just like, like how did you really mean that, ma'am? Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's so awkward. <laughs> like, just say it. Just if you look beautiful, say it. you look beautiful. Or like, I love that outfit you're wearing. Like, yeah. That's it. That's all I gotta say. Like it in. You look great today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, and there is a phrase, um, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I believe that fully. <laughs> so what would you say your tips are for maintaining a positive sense of self and self love, particularly if you're, if someone is working in an industry that, you know, packages beauty, whether it's, you know, a fitness or a dance or a fashion, like anything, I guess in general, our society yeah. packages beauty. But. Right. Um, 
I think the thing is to not lose your identity, to know that your identity is true. And, and if you believe that that outfit or whatever you're doing suits you and you enjoy it and you're having fun, then that's all that really should matter. Um, and just sticking to that and quieting the nonsense that you hear um, constantly around you. Um, because for me, for example, growing up, I was very confident. I wore crop tops at, at the age of 10, you know, I was like rocking it out, you know, even though I was taller than everybody, but like, I love my outfits and I felt great in them and fe felt very positive. It wasn't until, you know, I was about a teenager and, um, people started then comp, uh, commenting on them constantly mm -hmm. and saying very negative things. And it was just kind of like, oh, well, like, I thought it looked great. And they're like, mm, maybe you should put some clothes on. And it's like, okay. And then like, you know what I mean? Or it was always, if I looked nice, it, it, then I looked pregnant or, you know, it just always, you know, yeah. And like things, people come up to me and say things like that. And it was just like, man, that completely just diminished everything that I, I just did to get, you know, to get dressed up and I did my hair and like, you know, it took the time. And I think people forget about that, that like, you know, with women, like we have a lot to take care of, you know, and, yeah. and when we do that and we put ourselves out there, you know, it's just that words can be so hurtful. So if you are confident though, like now I've even had people say things to me before, you know, whatever. And I mean, literally there's hundreds of thousands of comments on world star and Reddit and things like that about like my lower half and my body. And, you know, if I was to be my, myself five years ago, maybe even four years ago, like before I started my business, I probably would have just been curled up in a corner and cried and read every single comment and spent hours and hours looking at it. I didn't even look at any of the comments that were like the couple funny ones. I was like, that's funny. That's, that's, that's hilarious, you know, whatever. Um, but it's just, it, it was one of those things where people are like, how are you like, you know, like this is going to bring a lot of attention. Like, you know, people probably gonna say some stuff, whatever. And I was like, people have been saying stuff to me my whole life, but this is no different. And so for me, now that I actually have the confidence and love myself, it it really doesn't affect me. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's what's so hard for people to understand. Like I literally have my closest people to be like, Hey, look, like I'm here for you. If you need me, like, you know, if you want to talk about anything, I was like, no, like this is a very, this is a celebration. I don't care if only, you know, five people took away from the video, something positive, And they were like, Oh my gosh, like you're doing amazing things that helped, that helped them. You know what I mean? And that's what my whole platform is about. That's what I'm about is, is just continually trying to help people to realize that you don't have to be put in this box that mm -hmm. others, you know, people you love or people from society or TV or whatever tell you that as a, you know, for me, white, blonde hair, blue eye, female, that's, you know, larger body, like, you know, that I am not worthy and that I am not an athlete and that I am not all the things that I have actually proven and shown that I am. Right. Yeah. I think you said something though, key though, you only looked at, even though you have a healthy self love mm -hmm. now, you didn't like go through and read all the comments. You only right. read some of them. Right. So I think that sometimes even, you know, when we have that identity, it's mm -hmm. still wise to, you know, filter that extra noise out and not mm -hmm. even let it. Yeah. Anywhere well, in our mind. Well, cause it's one of those things that like, and you know, as a teacher, when you, you know, if you hang out with the, the kind of rougher crowd, right. Eventually something might happen because you were around that and you surrounded yourself with it. So I view the same way of like, for me, of when I look at, you know, the negatives and stuff like that, like, I don't, I don't spend my time with people that tore me down back in high school. I don't hang out with those people anymore. Right. So I feel like that's a growth thing. And I think that if you're in a industry and it's unfortunate, because if you're in a job and you can't get out of it, you know, financially or whatever, you don't have the luxury, um, that, that you have to step back and, and, and realize that you are strong and that you can get through this and that maybe this is only a temporary time that you have to be in that position. Um, but that you can, you know, push forward. And I mean, I was at a gym that I was not respected at. And people said things to me all the time and I ended up leaving, but in a timely manner when it was appropriate, you know what I mean? I was, it wasn't just like someone said the first comment to me, which that was actually a week after I had started. It wasn't after that, you know, it wasn't after inappropriate, like, you know, touching or saying things or whatever, you know, I stuck my ground. I did my deal because I wasn't going to run away from where I deserve to be. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what I mean? And, and just because of being a female or, 
you know, just cause my body is deemed as more sexual or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, I held my ground, did my, did my work. And then from there, you know, prove myself to myself that I could handle it and not just crumble to the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And remember you deserve to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah if, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a little bit of a flip to a different okay. topic, but, um, for photo shoots, you know, what would some of your styling tips or your preparation tips be? I'm, I'm guessing that for everything you've accomplished, mm -hmm. you had one or two photo shoots in your life, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so what, so I guess like for me, you know, when it comes to photo shoots, right. I think that it's very important that you have a say in what you're wearing, right? And if you are a model and they put you in stuff and whatever, that's a different situation. But for me, for example, I've always been able to make up, you know, what I wanted to wear, whether it was doing any fitness clothes or like I did a photo shoot um, with a, a, the, this fit photographer um, who's here in Nashville and she was great. Um, but we did one and I was wearing like a big white button up shirt, you know, and like, and like booty shorts, and whatever. And, um, and so again, like something that was different out of my comfort zone, but it was so cool to try. And then I actually wore like my dresses and like things and some boots. And like, that was the first time I ever wore real people clothes in a photo shoot. And I finally felt confident to do that. Um, and it was because, you know, I had bought in a few things that I really felt like I looked positive in. Um, I didn't bring anything that brought on negativity or that made me second guess myself. Um, you know, I, I had a uh, kind of an array of a selection of things, um, you know, and for me, it was really important that I knew when I felt my most comfortable. And I don't think a lot of people know when they feel their most comfortable, you yeah. know what I mean? I think that's hard for them to find and that's time and experience that has helped me. But for example, I love wearing booty shorts. Like it is my favorite thing. Okay. And again, like, you know, they're appropriate and whatever, but it is just a vibe and I love it because I have great legs and, um, they're muscular, you know, whatever. Um, but when I wear pants, the pants roll down. Okay. Because of my stomach and it's very annoying. And that's why I don't compete in pants either. That's why people are like, Oh, you always wear those shorts. There's a reason I don't want to be lifting up heavy stuff. And then my pants are falling down, you know, and that's just what happens when you have a larger bot, like, like bottom, like, you know, half, and then the waist is a little bit smaller. Like, so, you know, it really was out of comfort. And then even with dance, I wore shorts all the time um, versus pants and stuff like that. So I've just, this is just a style that I know that fits me better um, and that I like. Uh, so I think knowing yourself and knowing what, you know, what you feel best in. And also too, like for me, not being afraid, like when I did my very first like few photo shoots, right? Um, at first I thought, okay, my hair has to be straight. I need to be like this. I need to do this. I need to do that. Like all these things, all these poses, right? And like that everyone else did. And literally I never used any of those, any of those pictures. Like I used the ones that were cool and me doing cool stuff. You know, I didn't use the ones where I looked like everybody else. Um, and so then I started realizing, okay, maybe I can go to a photo shoot and have my hair curly, like naturally curly. Um, Cause I'll just like wash it and then it'll be naturally curly. And, uh, and I know that some people used to be like, oh, that's like frizzy or it doesn't look, you know, whatever. And I didn't care. And so I just started wearing it. And like, and I mean, that's like my picture that I put on the billboard. Um, it literally is me doing a back jump and my hair is just natural. And it's just like, and it's, it's flawless. You know what I mean? Yeah. But literally like, you know, back in the day, I would have thought, oh, it needs to be straight. I need to look like this. I need that. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and, and I just, I wasn't honest to myself about those things. Yeah. I remember high school, even college, because my hair is naturally curly and, um, I didn't have a hair dryer, like, yep to straighten it. My dad was not going to be buying me any of those things, which is yeah. fine. So I would take bobby pins and clips and I would try to dry my hair straight oh, and I would like I pull it down because I was like curly hair, bad and frizzy yes. bad. And yep. Bad. No, I know. I did the same thing. I mean, in terms of like, I tried to straighten my hair every day. Like I, and, and it was just horrible. Like I, and my friends are like, you have such beautiful curly hair. I'm like, no, it doesn't look straight. It doesn't look how it's supposed to, you know? And so it just really, it, it really comes down to it where, you know, you, as you get older and as you accept yourself more, you realize how beautiful that is. And as long as you see yourself 
and you see the beauty in yourself, then it really doesn't matter because you're, if you feel confident in something, you show up to a shoot or whatever, and you're just rocking it and you own it, then no one, you're not going to have that bad energy or, you know, or anything like that. I feel like you're truly going to attract positivity back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yes, this has been so much fun. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> I hope been, it's helpful. And I love that you said what you're comfortable in because that's, you know, sometimes I notice people will try to put something on that's too tight for them mm -hmm. because they think that that's what it should be. And I mean, it's fine. Like tight fitting clothing does right. have a place, but not, it has to yes. be like the class. No, that, tight fitting that's so awkward and the, you know, it has to go with the person's personality. Yes, that's so true. And, um, and it is a thing. It, it's really like, you know, just because it is like trending or it's like this or whatever, like, doesn't mean that you have to wear it. Or also like for me, for example, like, I mean, I just found a jumpsuit that fit me, but it was an extra large. And like, I put it on, everyone was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful, whatever. But as I wore it, I was just miserable because it was like too tight across. Cause I like it zipped up in the back. Like, but again, everyone loved it. So it was great. And I'm like, cool. But like, I'm probably not going to wear it again. Cause I didn't feel successful in it, but I tried to step out of my comfort zone because I have never been able to have a full jumpsuit before. Cause they never came in a size that like you know, or a material that worked for me. So for me, it was just like an opportunity of growth, which I learned that actually I don't really like them so much. And I had fixated that, oh, I only want to wear these and I really want to try them out and really want to do it. It'll look great on me. And then like, you know what I mean? And like, maybe there's a different brand and maybe it would look great and whatever, but it just like, it's the ideal that we think that like, oh, when we're thin, things will be better. Oh, when we yeah. look like this, things will be better. It's like, oh, like and it's, and it really just kind of like, you know, shot that, that part about the jumpsuits down for me. And I was like, you know what? I could have rocked this outfit that I could put like kind of together and make look better on my body much better than, than what that did. But again, sometimes we have to learn and we have to try things and step out of our comfort zone. Yeah. Well, I mean, what you're describing is living in the future and mm -hmm. being miserable in the present versus like just living in the present. And yep. it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. So tell the world how they can connect with you. Yeah. So all of my, like my Instagram, my Twitter, you know, YouTube, TikTok, all that is dandy fitness one. So the number one, um, and, um, on my website, it's dandyfitness.com. Um, you know, I just, um, started this love your body Nashville Instagram. And so that's open. Um, so I'm trying to just, again, create more content that is helpful for you guys. My podcast is a love your body podcast. I have a love your body journal, you know, all these different things so that it can help us as a society, love ourselves a little bit more. Yeah. And I saw on your website, you had a, your body, your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I, and it just goes back to like everything that if anybody if you, that you know has ever been like verbally abused or has felt some type of way, it, it really is like, it, it is nobody else's business about what you do or how, you know, how you live your body, you know, living your body and what you do with it. And, and I think that if you feel beautiful in crop tops and booty shorts, then like rock the crop top and booty shorts, you know, if you don't feel comfortable yet, then, you know, get your movement in, you know, start eating, you know, better foods maybe, or whatever to feel like you're most successful. Cause it'll help give you this endorphins and make you feel good in it. Um, you know, if you think that, you know, you're just, um, I don't know that you want to explore in different outfits and stuff like that. Like, like go, you know, go for it, you know, cause you're not going to know until you try. Um, and that was something that I think that held me back with my weight and stuff that I didn't try enough. Um, and now I'm really at this exciting time where I have been and I've kind of found like my groove and what I like and stuff like that. So I'm trying to slowly add more pieces into that, into that regimen. <laughs> yeah. I think as also a business woman, I also think of like your body, your business is in like, it's my business to take care of my body. Yes. Whatever that happens to be, whether it's like eating alkaline foods mm -hmm. or if it's like movement or whatever yep. that happens, like it's my business and my responsibility to. Yes. To a hundred percent. Well, and to, and to set the example too, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, because 
it is one of those things that when you are a female entrepreneur and things like that, like people are watching and people are trying to like soak in everything and take in everything. Um, and you know, everybody loves to be like, Oh, well that worked for her. So it'll work for me. But I try to just be very clear on like that. These things are what I do. And this is what helps me. And like, if you want to try it because nothing else has worked, you know, or whatever, then by all means, let's do it. Um, but you have to decide that that's how you want to progress. Yeah. 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 It is a personal choice. Yes. Awesome. So thank you so much for your time, Danny. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you so much. I had a, a great time. This was awesome. Yes, it was. Thank you so much. <laughs>